hey, this is Brett. I wanted to do a plug for my new book and, and course coming out, Picking Winners and Losers in Real Estate. It's going to be exciting, detailed course, all my secrets. I bought hundreds and hundreds of properties, and I want to share it with you so you can be successful too and make great wealth through real estate. It's not as hard as you think, but you, if you go through this course, you'll learn the different uh, ways to do it and what to look for and how to verify that you are actually getting a good deal and how to get them and how to look for them too. But today I want to talk about and read a lot of stories. When is the next real estate crash or bubble going to happen? Uh, it really frustrates me a bit because if you look at today, from 2008, totally different ball of wax. You have low unemployment, you have 3.5% um, interest rate, your buyers are much more credit worthy. For example, a stated loan before was a stated loan. If you said you made $5 million a year, I'm being a little bit fictitious there, but whatever you said, they would give you a loan on it. Today, a stated loan is if you say you make a certain amount of money, you have to verify that with deposits through your checking account. Also, there's many other different loans. Most of them have more down payment. I, I, as a realtor with EXP Realty, I see a lot of people that buy stuff with uh, elite, most of them are 10 to 20% down on their stuff. And if you look at the hedge funds out there, Warren Buffett's hedge fund and all the rest of them, they're buying, they're, they're got one up homes for cash, so there's no mortgage on them. Me personally, last year I did about four and a half million in cash just from income real estate. So they don't have any mortgages, they don't refinance them, they don't do anything, they just want their income. So when you're looking at this stuff, I'd say 20 to 30% of all homes almost were purchased with cash. Now cash could also be IRAs. A lot of people are using their IRAs now to, to pay for their homes and just putting a loan and paying themselves back. How are they going to foreclose that if they're not? So, so when you're looking at, is there going to be a bust? No. And the other thing too, people say, well, prices are getting too high. Well, they're, they're the same price almost as they were 10 years ago. So imagine going down and buying a new car at the prices that they were 10 years ago. That would be a great thing. The only thing that may be a little bit different in this market, and a lot of people are not being able to afford housing, that me and my wife have seen, because we deal with a lot of renters, is student loans and medical bills. Um, a lot of people didn't know that these indemnity plans didn't cover everything on the medical, so they get something from the hospital, they gotta pay that off. Or, if you know a lot of people are just getting out of college and have student loans, they gotta pay those off. They may be doing some kind of a internship where they're in a different area so they can get them paid off. But all that stuff has to come into play. But those are your two main factors why people can't afford uh, housing right now. I read an article uh, the other day that millennials, you know, some, most, a lot of them have six figures in the bank and they're, they're ready to move out. They're getting older, they're, they're, they're starting to mature, they're wanting homes, they're wanting a place to stay. And, and that, the other thing too is rents are going up. I mean, the, the vacancy rates are still low. I can tell you with ours, you know, when we put something up for rent, it gets rented. Our vacancies, you know, as far as people want moving out and coming in, it's very low. Uh, I'd say it's under 5%. I think it's under 1% in Cleveland, downtown area. So if you're looking, there's not going to be another crash that I see right now. Um, uh, consumer confidence is up, which means that production's up, people are making more money, people have money to spend, they have confidence that the economy is going to keep doing good, and that's the key and financing, the loose financing they used to have is gone. The banks are not as big a factor as they used to be. I was talking to a guy in Scottsdale and he says there's over a trillion dollars in private notes out there, people that basically let other people lend. So there's many different, you know, there's lease options and, and stuff like that out there too. So there's all kinds of different ways that things are being financed, but not everything's getting financed through the banks. And that that's, that's a positive thing for the whole real estate uh, market in my opinion. So when you're thinking, if you think there's going to be another bust and you're going to wait around, you're just going to be left behind because it, it, that's not happening. Now, luxury market is soft, no doubt about that. If you've got, uh, you know, New York and California, two totally different markets. I was reading yesterday that in the winter time in, in, in uh, Oregon, or, or I can't remember what, I think it was Oregon, they're not going to be able to kick tenants out. That's going to diminish their values a little bit on that part of it. So, you know, a lot of it has to do with, the, with the, the policies of the states, but I can tell you in 90, 95% of America, property is going to be fine, especially the medium price ones, not the higher price ones. So, if you're looking for a crash, it's, in my opinion, not going to happen for at least another five to six years. 
So if it does happen, because again, the price are just not going up like they were in the uh, 08. They're still the same price as 08. So, um, and there's very low inflation and consumer confidence is up. People are working low uh, unemployment. Um, I know that a lot of the people that are on government are, are getting off because they can't find housing for themselves so they go get a job and they start paying rent. So that's what I want to talk about. When is the next real estate crash? I don't see it for another five, five to 10 years because we had 10 years of nothing being built for, for medium homes from, uh, from, uh, from 1998 all the way to, two, or excuse me, 2008 all the way up to 2018. They, they weren't being built. Um, when Trump came in in 2016, he started to some regulations and the steam is starting to, to, to move forward where they're starting to build, but they've got 10 years to, 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 uh, to get it. So, I mean, if you remember back in the early um, 2000s, if you drove over to a new subdivision, most of them were fenced off, if you remember. There wasn't anything going on, nothing being, being built. Go to the same places today, they're being built like crazy, but it's still gonna take time. So look for that. And we're not going to have another crash for a while, so start to keep buying real estate, keep moving forward, and give me a call, especially if you want the best realtor in town, in my opinion. I know that's conceited, but that's the way I, I look at things. I'm just kidding. But um, give me a call. I'm Brett with EXP Realty. I'm an Icon agent for two years in a row, 216-703-5740. And if you want to sell your home in Arizona or Ohio, we have great flat fee listing price. It's unbelievable. Opt in underneath and I'll send you all the information you want. 216-703-5740. Thanks. Have a great day.